Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 14th of January 2024. A moment's hesitation there. Thank you for being with us this morning. We really appreciate it.
Good morning. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, mystery other people that we can't quite see. not sure about this as a thing. I like candles. I mean, I like candles. Just got to remember to blow it out. That's yeah, what we forget to do. Well. We go out for the day. Yeah, we'll okay. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. I'm just sort of... Oh, the new flag. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, this is big flag. It says the same thing, but bigger. Okay, you ready, people? We're going up. Ah. Oh. That is a lot bigger. You can't really tell because we haven't got the other one to compare. Well, the other one I've left out there accidentally. Oh, you have. We'll just on the side. Oh, we can see that. Okay. Well, it says we're going to start. Marks for what you think it says. I think you know what it says. Well, I do. It says the same as before, if you can remember what it says said before. Okay, right. Okay, let's go. Good morning, Mum. It's time to get your coat on. It's nearly time to get your coat on. That's today's message. It's nearly time not to get your coat on. Get your coat on. Get your coat on. It's not nearly time. Let's start thinking about putting a coat on. Let's put our coat on. Um, and it's not about putting your coat on. Oh, okay. Good morning, and it's other not person. Nine either. Oh. Who have we got with us today? Well, now, look, I had to struggle for his name. I'm sure you all know. Who is this? Do you remember the program from many years ago? Uh, it's probably still on, maybe just about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, South Bank Show, Melvin Bragg. Melvin Bragg up, he's 83, possibly today, for all I know. There are a number of birthdays out there today, wish you all a very happy birthday. Uh, possibly not you, but it may be someone else that you know. Lots of birthdays on certain days of the year. Anyway, Melvin rang up and he said, uh, Jonathan, I've heard about your Maranatha house church. I said, it's not mine. Uh, we really felt inclined to do this by God. He said, I'm not sure if I believe in God, although I like thinking about these things. I said, well, wherever you're coming from, you're welcome to join us today. So he said, thank you very much. And I've always quite liked him. I, I listen to In Our Time, maybe you do as well, lots. Um, I used to watch the South Bank show and Open University when I was a kid. <laughs> The rest of us are watching Blue Peter the, and you well, were, did you a fat well, lot of good. Well, <laughs> Maybe you did. Well, Maybe I met it Heather, did. I didn't mention this. I thought I'd wait 33 years and then tell her <laughs> this is the guy you married. Uh, basically an intellectual. We've got a very weird <laughs> thing going on with the lighting today, everybody. I'm really sorry about that. I don't know quite what it okay, is. Well, it's no light one moment, we'll it's on dark it. it's another minute. But don't worry about it. If we could spend forever adjusting it. Well, no, but it's, it's making it difficult for people to see. If you come and have a look... Let's change, change places for a minute. Okay. Can you see that? It seems to be very high up. There you go. That looks perfectly alright to me. It's dark, isn't it? It is a bit dark. We just put no, that light on I there. Put that on, and it then it. That's fine. I'd, I'd stick with that. That's it. Well, that's the it choice. It's better when I turned it off. Well, if that's the choice, I'd go with that one there. All right. Sorry, everyone. We, you know, as you know, we never claim to be <laughs> anything. Anything. There you go. Okay, right, what have we got today? Well, we're going to pray, um, and many of you will know, uh, you all know, um, our ongoing uh, situation with our dear daughter Millie, and uh, the uh, uh, the cancer that she's had for three years, and um, it's uh, taken a bit of a turn, um, and um, uh, doesn't look very good. Um, so that's kind of where we are. It's difficult to talk about it kind of like, 
uh, in front of people, let alone in front of just a camera, although I know you're there. So thank you for your ongoing prayers, because it's really hard going. Um, and uh, that's, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Um, so um, there was a song uh, sung at a wedding many years ago um, uh, that we should adhere to, and it's I do not know uh, the future, but I know who holds the way. I, I do might not, not, I might know, not know what lies ahead. ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what lies ahead, but I know who holds the future, and he will guide me with his hand, and God will guide us and guide you and guide us all, guide Millie, guide Nick, guide the family as a whole um, along the way. We can throw the towel in, go to Beachy Head, we can throw the towel in and just abandon our faith uh, in the Lord, um, join some cult, become atheists, lots of options on the table, but none of those appeal at all. Um, it still appeals with the, the greatest... Um, uh, whatever to keep trusting in the lord and that's what we're going to keep doing keep trusting the lord no matter what amen no matter what so there you go i mean we don't cry okay we're going to pray lord god we do pray uh for your help and we need your help millie needs your help um and she has your help uh you promise to keep her and us all um through the day and through these days um, to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceedingly great joy. Um, though we don't need to fear, you know, the earth might change, we might change, uh, we might live, we might die, we might be ill, we might not be ill. There are loads of different things. We might be old, we, we may be young, um, uh, just there's so many different situations. But the only situation that really matters is that we're right with our maker. And we thank you that through the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be, mm. not we're automatically made, but we can be right with our maker. And Lord, there are lots of things on the, on the screen there that are continuations of the troubles of this world. And we, we bring before you uh, what's spiraling probably out of control in the Middle East, but it's predicted long ago in the scriptures that would happen. Uh, we thank you that one day um, after the earth is ruined, uh, by us all in so many different ways that it will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. Yeah. Lord, we live in a world where people don't believe there was a global flood when the world is covered 75% by water. We're, we're, we're a lost generation. We're a lost people. We think we know so much and we know so little, so proud. And yet we should be really humble. And we will be humbled. Um, and we want to be humble now and bow our heads before you and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, there's no one before you. There's no one after you. You are God. And we thank you, God, that you came in the flesh and was born and lived and gave yourself up to be the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God that alone could take away the sins of Jonathan Brain and of the world. And everyone who calls on your name and says thank you. So we call on your name and we're grateful and we're thankful for all that you've done. Please, Lord, would you be with us today? Um, help us through this day. Whatever this day holds, uh, you hold the day. And Yemen and Gaza Strip and Israel and America. You know, just hearing yesterday of the President of the United States, shame on us, going into a coffee shop and saying, I think I kind of work for the government. It's ridiculous. Lord, we're, we're a joke. The world is a laughing stock. And it says in Psalm 2, concerning all of our wicked plans, um, that he who sits in the heavens on your, on your throne, you sit in your heaven on, on your throne and you laugh at the foolish plans of man and the foolishness of man. A fool has said there's no God. And we, we don't want to be that foolish. We recognize that you are God. And we bow our heads and bow our knees, bow our lives before you and ask that you please be so kind as to be with us today. Make yourself known to us in breaking of bread. Make yourself known to us in our hearts, in our lives, in our minds uh, through your word and through these beautiful songs we can sing. Please help. We pray here and when we shoot across over this direction to another fellowship later on. Please be with all the fellowships that um, we know genuinely uh, trust in you and support. Uh, even this little bit of work we, we're very grateful yeah. Lord for individuals like those who are watching right now um, we pray for your blessing on us all, we need it in Jesus name, Amen, Amen. we said hi Catherine
Oh, well, look, Finding Harmony, you, know, you, you may have seen this little advert here. Heather, do you want to just say something very briefly about well, it? Well, this we started last week. It was like a little house church in our house. And um, it had gone out in the local area, and we put a little notice up in the local shop. And this is the next one for next week. Or, yes, next week, because it's next. 21st. Week. So, Finding Harmony, Jonathan's title, Questioning and Curious... And, you know, if you like open discussion about the meaning of life, then come along to. Got our name, our address, yeah. and what's well, that's going what on. And there's the other dates. 21st, so. yeah. You're very welcome. So we had a, had a yeah. lovely time last this week, This one actually. won't be, they're not online, they're just here. You're very welcome. In the evening. Okay, what have we got here? What have we got? Well, we've got our memory verse for the year, our verse for the year, which you know what it is, John eight thirty six, And Heather, it says... If the sun sets you free, you are truly free oh, beautiful i love that Amen. free indeed there's lots of different versions of it but it says the same thing i'll put this one up as well because it's special to us at the moment in lots of different ways have um it's really interesting i can i turn this around yeah. yeah i um was going for a walk the other day and i tend to and so we obviously mel got some bad news on wednesday um the cancer had it seems to have spread it's affecting her eyesight so that'd be great if you could pray about that 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 would her eyesight would improve um, she's on some meds that might help with that but so I'm walking down the lane and then you know and it's a bit windy it's a bit cold and then I just look up and there's this bird is just soaring it's not flapping it's just soaring and I just so I sent this verse to Millie and then she messaged and said well lots of people are sending it to us and um, which is Isaiah 40 31 they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Lovely. And then interestingly enough, even last night, just checking our emails. And um, there was a guy, you know, in counties who just messaged us about this, yes, but about something else that we were involved with. And uh, he said, I, I had a song for you to sing. He said, I sang it over you, obviously, in the spirit. And it was strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, which is taken from this verse. So I feel very much this is God's word to us yeah. at this time, which is lovely and encouraging. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, and we're on day 1392. Does it feel like the happy birthday? 1392 <laughs> day, 199 weeks. It's interesting, certain numbers mean more than others. 1392, you're going, mm. uh, when the year 1392, you know what happened, don't you? No. Okay, well, that's your homework. Um, but 199 weeks, well, that seems, you know, that's a, uh, where that means, that's, if I can get my calculations right, that's, that means next week's going to be 200. It took me a while, that one there. Yeah. 200 but weeks. But then also nearly 1,400 days. Yeah, absolutely. What will it be? Another, so it'll be uh, another seven days, 1399, 200. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Is that right? Yes, yeah, something yeah. like that. Seven, yeah. eight, nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so very exciting for next week. Um, and a lot can happen in a week, so we'll see what happens. And we're coming up to four years. Not quite a little while off. So there we go. Uh, lots of things to learn from that. Uh, what have we got here? What have we got? Well, we've got oh, a picture of the Middle East. We know what that is. The Middle East. So it's not drawing any particular attention other than the fact that this is like the Middle East. What you've got within the Middle East. Libya, across to kind of Afghanistan, you've got Pakistan here. Um, you've got trouble going on here with Yemen. It's about a thousand miles from here to here. Um, uh, animosity. Uh, towards Israel, animosity, kind of animosity, 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 uh, is animosity, uh, and other places as well, animosity. Oh, tiny little dot on the map, uh, Israel there. Uh, Israel isn't perfect. It's not perfect. It, it, it doesn't recognise the saviour. That's a problem. That is a serious problem, more than any of these other places. But there are individuals in all of these different places who um, who do trust in Christ, uh, who have made peace with their maker. So that's why I wanted to show that today. There we go. We're going to sing some songs. Sing some songs. Right now. I'm just going to say good morning, John and Brenda Wilkes. Hey there, John and Brenda. I feel like we ought to salute, but there we go. Right, where are you sitting, Mr. Well, Brent? I'm going to sit over here. Okay. Well, we also felt kind of from the Lord that um, it was in, oh, let's put you there. 
important to praise, really, at this time. When well, you move it down a little bit, it seems a bit high. That's all right, isn't it? Is it? Maybe it is. Maybe it's perfect. I can't see it. Actually, so. Yeah, I think that's yeah, okay. Perfect. Let me know if there's a problem there, everybody. So we're going to start with, so we're going to sing some praise. You'll notice a theme. Let's start with 1102, Praise Him, You Heavens. I've got an issue keeping my glasses on my notes. They keep sliding down. One, Here one. we go. 1102. <laughs> Which is five, six, four. Let's keep this one steady, Mr. Brain, okay? Okay. Do you want to say how many verses? Well, one and two. Yeah. And four? Yeah, sure. Yeah? You might be seeing some of the ones on your own because I can't quite see the words. <laughs> back in my book on yours 558 five, praise him on the trumpet oh, whatever God. instruments you got let's praise him <clears throat> we've got a show for <laughs> Oh, 
566. Praise the name of Jesus. All chorus. <laughs> sing them so often okay and then we'll finish with 1348 that's not a number is it praise god from whom all blessings oh, yeah. flow. we know you don't need to you just this is it. just kind of goes round and round and round yeah. but we won't go round and round that much singing it again you're the leader I'm following and I thought I'm, right. yeah, I'm right on one meagre he's occasion. right you're right Lance. but you played beautifully as ever I need to sort this glasses sliding down the nose issue it's un- you need, what you need is a bigger nose like mine oh you might be right but it's not all I can do about that good morning Nick how nice of you to join us hey Nick okay uh, now I I have normally I don't reveal much of this to uh, Heather of the day before, but I did reveal to her, so <gasps> she knows what number we're on today. It is number six. seven. Seventy six. Seventy six. Seventy six. Seventy six. Uh, just twelve verses, so I crammed it all on just to one slide. Um, what does it say to us today? You know, just occasionally, like on this occasion, I didn't read it through. So I couldn't tell you in detail exactly what it says. So it will be perhaps as fresh to us as it may be possibly to you unless you read the Bible all the time and you read Psalm 76 this morning. So let's see what jumps out to it. Lord, we do pray as we read your holy word that you would speak to us today in lots of different ways. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Amen. Okay. In Judah, God is known. Yeah, known there. Mm. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There's an awful lot in the Bible. An awful lot in the Bible. Don't replace Israel. It's a terrible mistake. There he broke the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword of battle. Think about these things here. Think about this. What Selah means, we believe. You are more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. Mm. Wow. There is a word. The stout-hearted. The stout. What? Well, there's a word I've not ever read before. The stout-hearted were plundered; they have sunk into their sleep. 
and none of the mighty men have found the use of their hands. It's sort of saying that we're weak ultimately. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both the chariot and horse were cast into a dead sleep. Mm, that's interesting. You yourself are to be feared. Do you fear God? You yourself are to be feared. And who may stand in your presence when once you are angry? You caused judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. Mm. When God arose to judgment to deliver all the oppressed of the earth, Selah, think on this. Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. With the remainder of wrath you shall gird yourself. Make vows to the Lord your God and pay them. But keep your promises to God. Let all who are around him bring presents to him who ought to be feared. The Lord has been fearing God here. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is awesome to the kings of the earth. Wow. That's a, that's a pretty... It's very... It's not easy, that one. It's not easy, that one. Psalm 76. Okay, let's just gather around over here for a moment. Because of uh, what we have represented here with this bread and this wine, that, uh, at least for us, I can say that we don't crumble with the things that happen and are happening in our lives right now. Uh, we wouldn't wish um, uh, any trouble upon anyone. And uh, what we've read in God's word and what we've observed in his creation uh, tells us about him and history tells us about him and we believe in him we trust in the Lord and on that night when the Lord Jesus was to be betrayed just just before just before then with the disciples gathering including Judas so you can be really really close to Jesus and be unsaved you know you know you can you, you could have sat down at a meal with God incarnate Emmanuel God with us and not actually be a Christian not actually be saved and that's extraordinary and that tells us to examine ourselves and we should examine ourselves before we take of the bread and the wine and that, that word is really directed to those who would sit down regularly in um, what might be called a, a church sort of setting or religious sort of setting um, <coughs> to those who call themselves Christians to examine themselves. If you're not yet a Christian, if you're not yet born again, um, and you know, if you think you are, but you, you know, you happen not to be, or if you know you're not, uh, yeah, then, you know, this is some bread and some wine and it's maybe just a tradition or, or something of interest, but there's no particular need to examine yourself uh, regarding what is being spoken of here. If you are a Christian, uh, we're told to examine ourselves, um, to look into our hearts, because we can be really, really near to Jesus and not actually be saved so if that makes any sense i'll probably mix yeah. my words up there a bit right. but you, hopefully you get what i'm saying so make sure you're saved and and if you if you're not get saved today the lord jesus on the night in which he was betrayed he took some bread and he broke it and he said this is this is my body which is given for you uh, take eat this and and do so in remembrance of of me if you've got some bread, take it now and say thank you to the Lord for his giving up his, his body for you. He gave up his life. He was the Lamb of God who to take away the sins of the world. We 
likewise he took the cup had some wine put some wine in it or had some wine in it poured out some wine into the cup and this wine is a picture of his blood like the bread is a picture of his body the wine is a picture of his blood which was to be shed and I'm sure the disciples um, I have no idea what was going through Judas's mind other than um, 30 pieces of silver money you know you can't serve money and God and there is the prime example what was going through his mind was some cash which he threw back in the end and then it paid for his grave it's just miserable we serve God and this is a picture of his blood that was spilled for us and we say thank you dear Lord Jesus Christ for your blood that was shed for us that you gave your life for us and we um, metaphorically and nothing more than that take um, of this blood and this bread and this body and this life which was given up for us perfect lamb of God to take away the sins of the world and we don't have to do this to have our sins forgiven. We do this in remembrance of him. Not because we forget, but because we want to remember. We want to remember, want us to think about his death and his resurrection. And it does us good to meditate and to think on Jesus and what he's done for us. And we say, bless you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're sorry for our sins. Please cleanse us afresh even today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hmm. Hey everyone, thank you for your ongoing prayers for us. It's obviously super tough at the moment. I'm finding it actually quite hard right now. Um, my dad's really ill as well with some dementia, some a bag of it. Um, and uh, got a, a dear Auntie Mary um, who um, is really poorly as well and uh, nearly died the other day. Um, and But then suddenly he's kind of all right again and having various transfusions and things. Um, and she's, she's a, a real sweet soul and uh, just pray for all the family over there as well so there's a lot going on um, and it's quite hard to handle but thank you for um, your prayers for us and maybe you're going through it as well we don't want to forget you and others there are plenty of people going through it out there in this world who have no faith and maybe not a lot of support as well so we're very grateful for all the support that we have um, does it make it any easier? Um, it helps to know you're not alone. Yeah. It helps to know yeah. other people are thinking of you. Yeah. If we don't get back to you, um, you know, because in a way there's lots of lots of people that are sending messages through. Um, you know, we're there for you, and we'll, you know, if you want to come around for a cup of tea or whatever. Um, I'd never sleep again. We'd never <laughs> sleep again if we drank all the tea that's been offered. But we're very, very, very grateful. Um, for you know any support that comes along in that sort of way and you know reach out to reaching out to people is a very precious thing so thank you all god bless you let's uh, move on just for a few more minutes okay. what have we got uh well what is there to think about well this one here boom 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 moving on brother we approve of this I don't think Heather's actually seen this one. I haven't. Dude with good news. Dude with good news. He is really good. He's got uh, slightly more lights than we've got. Uh, is that 16 ma? I guess that's like microns or something like that. So he's got 16 views, likes. 16 million. 16 million. He pumps these out. He chucks out so many videos. It's incredible. Uh, always in the same way. And uh, it's really, really good. It's, really, it's a real blessing. So we recommend this one. We do approve of the dude Brian with good news. Miller. Brian okay. Miller. It's on TikTok if you're not on TikTok. Um, hey, the Chinese have already got you, so don't worry about it. They've got a little <laughs> bit more. I'm going to um, say good morning, Brenda. How lovely of you to join us this morning. Oh, God bless you. Here we go. Let's pray. Lord, we do pray as we just look into your word for a few minutes. And we've got to shoot off after this over to Slaybrook. We pray for a blessing there. 
pray for your blessing at uh, Tiffin and Christian Fellowship. We pray for your blessing over in Norris. We pray for your blessing um, in Bratton and over in, in Bristol at Bethany and um, Lord, a ton of other places. Lord, please would you help us, we pray. Be with us today. Be with uh, the dear folk down in Sheldon Road. Thank you for that just the other day. Uh, Lord, and be with us. We need your help. We need your help. And we pray that you'd speak to us today through your word in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Here, right this precise second. No, it's come back to me what the next slide is. That's a relief then. It is a, a relief. It's nearly time. Get your coat on. Get your it's coat not about on. being treat. cold, but it's about Heather's going to immediately go, oh yeah, put all the armour of God. No, I don't know. Put on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. He could be right. So, um, just going to read through that very quickly. This is very quick, this part. And then we're just going to look at another part. This is the part that leads into this. Remember who this is spoken to. This is really important. We've got a picture of love here, but at a great cost. And about the law, God's law, and that we've all sinned. At the law, God's law, the Ten Commandments, shows us in no uncertain ways that we've all sinned. It's a teacher. You remember your favourite teacher at school. Um, I, I'm going to say one of my favourite teachers at school. My favourite teacher at school well, was Mr. Weller, but also there's Mrs. Crowley. There were a few teachers, but um, I, we've got a teacher who lives just over the back there. He was he was fearsome when we were at school, but we had great respect for him, and we knew that we couldn't infringe his law without repercussions and those repercussions were normally pretty severe you remember that and the bible describes the the law of god as being a teacher it teaches us that we're sinners sinners that are in big trouble and that we need a savior the law god's law like do not lie oh i've lied that makes me a liar do not thieve anything do not take steal. do not steal anything i've done that so i'm a lying thief do not look at a woman sorry heather um with lust i'm a adulterer at heart you know the, the, the law teaches me i am intrinsically a sinner i'm a sinner and um not only heather can be angry with me but i can be angry with myself and god is angry with me God is angry with me, a sinner. What can be done? What? Who can deliver me? The Pilgrim's Progress says, who can deliver me? Pilgrim says, who can deliver me? Flee from the wrath to come. And where's he going? He's going to the cross. The law teaches us that we need a saviour. The, the law leads us to Christ, to Jesus. Um, and this passage is primarily written to people who should know better they're, they're young christians they're christians like me and i hope like you and this is what we're meant to be like and then there's a little bit more at the end which we're going to look at so let's just go through this everyone must submit to the governing authorities yep uh-huh for all authority comes from god god's in charge of everything and those in positions of authority whoever they might be have been placed there by god god pulls all the strings he is in charge. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Don't go against God. If a, if a government tells you to do something which is against God, you don't have to obey them. But be very careful about that. And a prime example is with, with what went on during COVID. It wasn't the law. Some, some things like taking certain medications, it wasn't the law, but there was very strong advice to do it. You didn't have to do it, it wasn't the law. So some people didn't, some people did. That was a voluntary thing, okay? So if there's a law, like this is the speed limit, if you break the law, you'll be punished. If you, if you, if, if the law of the land is this, that or the other, um, and it's reasonable and it's right and it's good and you know that it's all okay, and you're, oh, I'm sorry I've been caught, but whatever, um, you will be punished, okay? For the authorities do not strike fear into people who are doing right, uh huh, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, 
And they will honour you. It's just a simple principle of life. For the authorities are God's servants, sent for your good, to keep order. That's the way it's meant to be. It's not often like that, but that's the way it's meant to be. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. God has a way of governing this world, and he uses people. And often people, like you and me, and governments don't get it right. We disobey God. It's not the way it's meant to be, but it's the way that it is. So you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. Good to have a clear conscience. Clear conscience toward God. This is leading into something else. Pay your taxes too, for these same reasons. You know, they say that two golden things in life are you've got to pay taxes and you die. They're, they're, that's just the way that it is. Well, actually, a lot of people don't pay taxes. But everyone dies in the end. For government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. And give respect and honour to those who are in authority. Don't owe anyone anything. If you owe people money and you don't pay it, you'll end up with a reputation. Don't be like that. Here we go. Love fulfills God's requirements. Owe nothing to anyone. Owe nothing to anyone. Put it right today. Except for your obligations to love one another. Yeah, that's it. Love one another. Continue to do that. If you love your neighbour, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. God's law leads you to Christ. For the commandment says, you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not cover. These and other commandments are summed up in this one commandment, love your neighbour as yourself. You remember that bit there. Love does no wrong to others, real love. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. That's the first little bit there. And that's just flashing away, and that's going to do that probably annoyingly. Um, I wonder if I can move that on there. No, I think I'm going to have to move that on. Maybe it's some sort of weird time loop thing. There we go. Very helpful. <laughs> you know when you can tell it's just about to do something it's not meant to do. There we go. Look, let's go to the next little one here. Okay, so this is the bit. So that's the first little part there. Uh, know that you're a sinner and know that the law is there to condemn you. It doesn't save you. It condemns you. You can't keep it. I can't keep it. And there's something about love there. And that love, first of all, comes from God towards you and towards me. And that first little thing there, remember who this is spoken to. So make sure this message comes through loud and clear. For by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God. It is not from works, not from being good. Everyone thinks being good gets you to heaven and you boast about it. I think I'm probably good enough. It's not that way. I think I'm probably all right with God. I think God will accept me because I'm probably quite a good person. I'm not as bad as someone else. It's not that way. That was never part of the deal. God never came up with that plan. That was never it. It was always a gift of God, to receive a gift of God. You can't do anything to receive a gift. It's just offered to you. And if you haven't received it, one of the evidences for that is that you think you're probably okay. You're probably all right with God, but you're not. What does it say here? Darling, would you like to read this bit here? We're just going to look at the red bit. Before. This is all the more urgent, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Mm -hmm. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armour of right living. Because we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Yeah, it's just that. You know, I was inspired to just underline this today in this strange period that we're going through by that Ryan Miller TikTok clip. And he said, just, if you want to... Um, truly be clothed in righteousness just bathe yourself in god's word let his word just envelop you just get into his word um and more and more and more don't just run to it 
when the temptation comes be there already be in that place already of of filling your time up with god's word rather than what it says at the end it says at the end there don't let yourself think about ways to indulge the flesh to to make you happy you know it's not just about being happy and there's nothing wrong about being happy but it's that isn't the the conclusion of the matter there's more to it than that so the first little thing is it going to work oh we go time is running out time is running out see that did you see what time it was on there i didn't i didn't even have time to see what time it was on there time is running out it's, but it's not too late now concerning what was said there you need to get saved and if you're saved you need to live this life which is a demonstration of how worthy you believe and know Jesus Christ to be. And in doing this, your life will be daily transformed in the mind and in the body, in your actions, in your desires. You won't be thinking about ways to make yourself happy. You'll, you'll be happy as a result of what God is doing in your life. But time is running out. But it's not too late today. We're still alive. I'm still alive today. 150,000 people died today. He says, this is all more urgent. For you know how late it is. I, do you know what? If they knew how late it was then, the, the man who wrote these words, we believe it was Paul wrote these words to uh, Roman Christians back then. If he was able to say in truth, well, you know how late it is. Was he saying it? You know how late it is in your life, that life is whizzing through, that they were all of a certain age and they were near the end of their lives or uh, the Roman authorities were coming to get them or he was speaking kind of like, you know how late it is in my life. I'm not here for that much longer. My time down here is coming to a close. Maybe all of those things. But I think there's something a little bit more being spoken of here. For you know how late it is. Do you know what? I think God's clock is different to our clock. I, I did a little video of putting up the new flag this morning and I did it on a time lapse thing and it, it, it turned about 10 minutes into about, I don't know, 15 seconds or something like that. Just zapped it all together somehow. Do, 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 just something happening. I, I think God's clock is entirely different. I think we're stuck in time and we get an inkling that there's something a little bit more dramatic going on just out of the corner of our eyes. But God isn't stuck in time at all. And he looks down and he sees the end from the beginning. And he declares the end from the beginning. You, we know how it works out. Read Psalm uh, Isaiah 45 and 46. You, you'll know that God declares the end from the beginning. He tells us already, not least Genesis to Revelation, but in, in the fullness of the prophecies that are contained therein. He tells us what's going to happen. He tells us the points we are in history. Maybe he doesn't very specifically so that we know accurately the time more often than not. It's more of, well, I think we're here. We're nearer the end than when we first believed. He gives us a time clock of our own lives. I'm 58 this year. I know it's hard to believe, but it's completely true, I think, as far as I know. I wasn't there at the beginning and I don't remember the first few years, so I'm guessing... <sighs> Most of my life is gone. Most of some lives are gone. Most of our lives are used up, unless you're really young. You know, you've got years ahead and it seems like you've got forever. It seemed like I had forever when I was a child. And now it feels like I've got a few years left. How long have we got? I have no idea. We know that time is late. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. This is definitely to Christians. I hope you're a Christian. How do you become a Christian? When we first believed. You've got to believe. You've got to trust in him. Trust in the Lord. How do you do this? Well, you shed something. You turn around from one direction. You take off one coat and you put on another coat. You don't put on good works and try hard. It was never that way. The law, remember, teaches us what we are. And we read about it. And we're also reminded of it here. Don't participate in the darkness. There's a, there's a dark way for life to be and it, it promises light and fulfillment and joy and happiness but it delivers nothing other than a, a sparkling moment or two and then it's gone oh oh talking to someone the other day a dear friend who said they participated in some darkness they're not a christian some darkness and then it's like oh 
such a disappointment. And it is a disappointment. And not only a disappointment in the moment, but ultimately it can be a terrible and will be a terrible disappointment in the end. That the only memories you have will be looking back at, why did I live that life? Why did I live that life? You need to step away from that. And it's a warning to Christians, just run from this. Have nothing to do for this, to do with this. Make no provision for me. Not me time, it's God's time. God having his way in my life, in your life, in our lives. And that's what Millie's doing. She's making provision for God in her life. And what we're doing as a family, making provision for God in our lives. Letting him be number one in every aspect as best we can. And asking him to help us to do that. Because we can't hold it together for very long at all. Um, the night is almost gone. It's talking about we're in the night. We're in the time of darkness. But the light is on the way. Jesus Christ is on the way. The day of salvation will soon be here. Jesus Christ is coming back. That's what Maranatha means. Come Lord Jesus. It's the promise only written once. The promise of Jesus Christ to come back. He is coming back. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes. Take off the dirty clothes and put on the shining armour of light. Put on Christ. That's what I mean. Put on Christ. Put Christ on. Got a little picture here. I like this one here. It's kind of difficult. I'm not so sure about it, but I kind of like it. you got the, the, the devil's way, the devil's clothes. And just run. Run from this. This is going down. And Jesus Christ offers clean clothes for you to put on. Clean clothes for you to put on, a light clothes, righteousness. A, r- righteousness, a robe of righteousness. You know, in Revelation in chapter 7, it talks about uh, John being taken up into the heavenly realm and seeing an innumerable number of people that are clothed in white and they're crying and they're forlorn in some ways. There's they're, they're, they're shame, and, and the Lord Jesus goes around and he's wiping the tears away. And John says, who are the or the angel says, who are these? And John says, I don't know who are who are these that are clothed in white. And and the angel says, these are those who come through the great tribulation. That's not going to be me, I don't believe. But it would be those that wait until it's too late, but believe actually there's probably some truth in this. And then they they don't take the mark of the beast. They don't bow down to the the evil one to come. They bow down to Jesus Christ and they lose their lives for Christ's sake. And they're clothed in righteousness. And they're crying in, in heaven. And the Lord Jesus comes along and says, It's okay. I for, I've forgiven you. I've forgiven you. Yeah, you waited until you had to die for me. You should have lived for me. You should have lived for me. And this is about living for Christ now. While you, can't, while you can. Because time is short. So live for Christ. And you pray for me that I would do that. And for Heather, that we would do this. And for our children, that we do this. In these difficult times, we would do this. We would live for Christ. And I, I would ask you to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, help me to live for you. Make me a real Christian. Save me from my sins. I understand that I am a sinner. I have sinned and I'm sorry for my sins. Will you please take away all those dirty deeds of unrighteousness and clothe me with righteousness would you would you make me a child of god for jesus name's sake amen amen okay i'm just going to say hi rowena and i think hi derek and sheila and hi craig if you're still there hey guys may god's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way may his presence within god and keep you from sin go in joy go in peace Go in love. We've got a new little slide here you might want to see. It's going to probably start with music in a second. I don't know the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Hi, friend. Okay. God bless you all. Love you all. Thank you for your Thanks love. Thanks for joining us. And, um, yeah, do pray. We've got a big appointment this Thursday morning going to the hospital with Millie. Can you turn that down at all? And um, 
they'll be giving her results of a full body scan and uh, and suggesting their way forward. So it'd be really great if you'd pray that we'd know. Um, one or other of us will be going in with her um, as she hears that news. Do pray um, that she might be able to... Um, she's on some meds to help with our eyesight. It'd be great if that improves still further. But actually, you know, she got to a prayer meeting and she said, ask them to pray for God's plan A at this time. You know, he's brought us a long way these last three years and we don't want plan B, C, D or E. We want plan A. Millie wants plan A. Um, but equally, I always remember that in Hebrews chapter 11, women received their dead raised to life again. And the Syrophoenician woman and the Lord Jesus seemingly, you know, putting her off, putting her off. And then in the end, her faith, you know, in a sense, got what she wanted. Can't I have in there something left over for me? And it's been on my mind about Dorcas. And they were saying, oh, Dorcas, all the things she used to do, how great she was. And I just thought, yeah, surely that's Millie. You know, we're blessed by her playing. We're blessed by having her around. So it ain't over. We ain't given up. We'll see you next week. <laughs>